to Unitec is to lay off somewhere in excess of 100 staff, possibly more than double that number using money borrowed from the government as part of a support package announced a fortnight ago. Checkpoint confirmed the job losses after speaking to Unitec's interim chief executive shortly before we came on air. Unitec, an Auckland-based tertiary institution, has been in what the government calls extreme financial difficulty with substantial operating deficits. On the 23rd of August, Education Minister Chris Hipkins announced the government would provide Unitec with a $50 million loan but made no mention of job losses. But Checkpoint has been sent a copy of an internal Unitec document detailing 23 programs being cut in full or part, although the language it uses is more oblique. I asked Mirren Davis, the interim CEO of Unitec, for clarification. Okay, so we've got about 20 programs and they include um, a range of certificates, diplomas and bachelor degrees and a couple of postgraduate qualifications. Um, and essentially they are programs that we've been looking carefully at for some, some time on the basis of a mixture of their financial viability, their strategic relevance and their educational performance. And um, those are the, the programs that having gone through that process on a program by program basis, uh, we do feel um, uh, the programs um, that, you know, looking at those areas are no longer um, fit for purpose and no longer is doing as, as well as they need to. You, you, you are um, calling a spade an inverted digging implement because I think it's tough for you to say the words, but you, you are dropping these programs, aren't you? We are not taking enrolments in 2019 and we are um, currently looking at teaching those programs out on the whole. We are mindful, however, that there is the roadmap process also underway, which will have an impact on the direction of the sector. Uh, uh, sorry, um, can I just... Sorry, Mirren. Uh, uh, Forgive me, can you just give us some clarity around the fact that the programs, and it, uh, the list is too long to read out, but if we go through them in alphabetical order just to give us a sample, BA, Bachelor of Arts, is going. Bachelor of Communications with Language Studies as your major is going. Short Courses in International Language, Bachelor of Communications, Master of International Communications, Doctor of Computing, uh, Diploma in Contemporary Music, uh, Master of Design, uh, and on and on, all the list we have, they are all going. You will not take any further enrolments in them. And once the current students complete their degrees or diplomas or whatever, that's it. That's right. D did you tell the government then that these courses were going? Did the minister, when he agreed to the $50 million loan, know that you were tightening your belt to this extent? Absolutely. We have been working closely uh, with TEC, who have been briefing the Minister, uh, they do understand that we will have to make significant changes, not just to our portfolio, but across all areas of our business to actually uh, return ourselves to a sustainable operating position uh, by the end of, of next year. So they absolutely have been working you know, closely and it will come as, as no shock. Uh, the moves that, that we are having to make with this regard, John. How many jobs are being lost? We're still working through that that process. I, I mean, it's no secret that we need to look at uh, cost reduction in the order of of 20%. You know, to the organisation that includes looking uh, at our operating processes and systems, at our all of our operating expenditure, and of course, um, as we've been really upfront with staff and transparent, also. Uh, looking at job losses as part of that picture. Uh, as okay, well. in terms of being upfront and transparent, how many job losses are we talking about? Ballpark. Ball, ballpark figure. We're expecting um, anywhere between a hundred and a couple of hundred jobs, full-time equivalent jobs. So a hundred to two hundred full-time equivalent jobs. Yes. Okay. So, and do those people know? Do do people know yet that that roughly 100 to 200 full-time equivalent jobs will go? Because if they're full-time equivalent, then that's actually more people, isn't it? Because that involves part-time jobs. Yes, 
Um, and staff are, are well aware that we are looking right across the organisation. There's already a number of, of change proposals. I mean, for example, we started at, at the top. We had eight members on the executive leadership team. We now have four. Um, and so, you know, right across the organisation, um, there is an understanding and an expectation that, that there will be job losses. I guess, yeah, clearly there is because the deficits are so high. They're very substantial. But the theoretical understanding that there will be job losses is not the same as people knowing specifically that their jobs are going to be lost. Do people, for example, if, if you are getting rid of the BA full stop, do those people know that they are going? People that are impacted by the... Um, program changes and you'll appreciate that we're right in the middle of, of that process currently, Don, and, and we're working through the impact. We haven't got detailed change proposals for the affected staff. Have you gone to staff, Mirren, have you gone to staff and said there is a restructuring taking place and your job is one of those in the 100 to 200 full-time equivalents that we are losing? We are in the process of doing that. There so, is a number of staff across Unitech that have already had those conversations and know they are impacted. For example, we have gone to the senior academic leadership in terms of our deans and, and um, head of pathways. They realise that there will be an academic design which they are actually involved in co-designing, that their roles will be uh, disestablished. So, Certainly, um, we're, we're at the point that we're able to. Uh, we have uh, talked about um, relentless communication. We've talked about being transparent, and I believe that you know, staff. If you were to talk to our staff, uh, that that on the whole, they they would actually talk about um, you know leadership and management uh, taking that approach, John. Did, did the minister, uh, does the minister, the education minister, Chris Hipkins, know that there's 100 to 200 full-time equivalent jobs going? I believe he is aware of that, yes. OK, so uh, there will be costs attached to, to, to uh, redundancies. How will that work? Is that is part of the $50 million loan that you are securing from the government? Obviously, you don't want to run in deficit, but is part of the $50 million loan to meet the costs of laying people off. Yes, it is. That's Miran Davis, who is the interim uh, chief executive of uh, Unitech. Uh, the Education Minister, Chris Hipkins, declined to be interviewed, but in a statement uh, we received just a few minutes ago, said, and I quote, the $50 million crown loan for Unitech is to ensure that it could keep its doors open. The independent financial advisor at Unitech has advised me that it's expected to enrol about 6,900 EFTSs in 2018, with further declines expected in 2019. This is significantly less than what Unitech had forecast, and I understand there will need to be a reduction in staffing numbers as a result. The Commissioner Murray Strong is currently working through the process to ensure the organisation is sustainable and any implication on staffing is yet to be determined. So that's what the Minister is saying, any implication is yet to be determined. It sounds to us like the Unitec are further down the track than that. We would love to hear from Unitec staff about where they believe they stand and what they have been told about their jobs. Do Texas 2101, we're happy to deal with you in confidence.